Good morning to all of you. A warm welcome to the Zoom webinar organized by GMOA and Society for Health Research and Innovation. We are glad to inform that each participant of the CPD webinar will be receiving an e-certificate for the participation. And please stay with us until the end of this session and we will be releasing the link in the chat box. Now let's move to today's topic. Today's topic is how much we know about oxygen and oxygen therapy for COVID-19. Kindly mute your microphone and turn off the camera during the presentation and use the chat box to clear your doubts at the end of this session. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Anthony Mentis, consultant critical care medicine, currently attached to the National Hospital of Sri Lanka. Thank you for joining us sir, today uh, and the flow is yours. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Anthony Mendis, uh, critical care consultant uh, at National Hospital, because that is the most important topic uh, today worldwide. And then it's, it's in crisis of oxygen in Sri Lanka uh, with the COVID. Uh, so this is uh, I think nowadays is, uh, everybody is talking about oxygen, but uh, this uh, I thought of gives a little information uh, uh, about oxygen because you have done uh, your O levels, A levels, and in the medical school. But uh, most of the people uh, forget all the uh, uh, information uh, uh, about oxygen. So this is the most important. Uh, this I thought of uh, this uh, give a little information about oxygen. Uh, so we are going to discuss physics, physiology, pharmacology. That is the easiest way to uh, classify uh, or this uh, uh, divide these topics right uh, into these three groups, and then the later uh, oxygen therapy. Right. So oxygen is uh, one of the most abundant chemical element on Earth. And then uh, one half of the Earth crust is made up of chemical compounds uh, uh, containing oxygen. One half of the Earth's crust is made up of chemical compounds containing oxygen. Uh, one fifth of the atmosphere is oxygen. Oxygen is a colorless gas found in air, but it is uh, pale blue liquid uh, when it is uh, in the liquid form uh, at very low temperatures. And this is the most important sentence here is life. This is uh, one of the life sustaining element on earth and it, uh, uh, all the animal, animal need uh, oxygen for their life. And then it was uh, discovered by Joseph Priestley in uh, 1774. And Lavoisier named uh, uh, this gas as oxygen. And uh, it is a misnomer uh, because this oxy means uh, sour. So it is, not, it is not a sour taste gas, it's a tasteless gas. Uh, and then, uh, so this, uh, uh, in, in physics topics, I, I thought of, uh, uh, give a little description about uh, oxygen, uh, manufacturing oxygen storage uh, and oxygen pipeline, oxygen fl uh, flow meters, uh, monitoring pulse, little, uh, the, the widely uh, using monitor pulse oximeter and arterial blood gas analysis and oxygen therapy. Uh, in very briefly, uh, and in the physiology, there are a lot of things uh, can be discussed about oxygen, but is, I choose only four, uh, four topics, oxygen cascade, oxygen dissociation curve, hypoxia and uh, oxygen toxicity. Uh, and uh, pharmacology, uh, prescription of oxygen, because this is a, this is a medicine. Therefore, we, sh uh, we should be able to uh, properly prescribe uh, oxygen and uh, we should be able to uh, discuss about uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics as well. And uh, this whole thing is for uh, general medical, uh, the my target uh, group is general medical uh, uh, 
doctors uh, just pose in turn uh, not for uh, very experts but uh, because i'm discussing uh, uh, these these things uh, very briefly uh, to uh, increase your enthusiasm about oxygen because it's nowadays uh, everybody is talking about oxygen right uh, so method of oxygen production so this is uh, uh, the the photosynthesis is the natural way of produ production of oxygen i think the uh, uh, that play a big role uh, in the world uh, the fractional distillation is the uh, commercial level uh, the large uh, uh, pr producing large amount of oxygen and then the separation methods like uh, uh, oxygen concentrators uh, and uh, by chemical reactions this method is also uh, uh, used to generate limited quantities of oxygen uh, mainly uh, 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 in submarines aircrafts uh, spacecrafts uh, when their oxygen stores are uh, depleted uh, and then the electrolysis of water that is very easy easy uh, uh, easy way of producing uh, uh, oxygen uh, if you can if you can put two electrodes into water and connect it to battery you can see we are bubbles coming from uh, both leads and the one is hydrogen one is oxygen the pure hydrogen and oxygen but the problem is we have to use a lot of energy so this is therefore need, it is not economical at all Uh, this is the uh, the technique of uh, oxygen concentrator. We trap uh, nitrogen from the air, and then the, uh, we have to use rest of the things. And then main problem here is the uh, uh, it has some impurities, uh, the impurities, and then uh, we can achieve only low flows, uh, about six liters. Uh, most of the uh, concent uh, oxygen concentrators. This is a black box. You don't see what is happening inside. Uh, there are chemicals that uh, 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 trap uh, nitrogen inside. Right. So this, uh, when we ox uh, when we store uh, oxygen, uh, so uh, uh, most of the time we uh, we store in um, oxygen cylinders. Uh, and uh, the, there are color coding system, but uh, there is a slight difference in uh, some countries. So international standards, uh, we use international standards. Uh, so, uh, so you can see uh, different different types of uh, uh, gas cylinders, uh, different color coding. And then uh, when you uh, store oxygen, uh, uh, in cylinders, so the different sizes has different capacities. So you can see this J cylinder, uh, 57 inches. Uh, it has a capacity of 6,800 6, 6, liters. So um, um, you know this. Uh, sometimes we use uh, high flow nasal oxygen. Uh, that is the most. Uh, 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 mostly use uh, oxygen uh, oxygen device uh, nowadays for covid but the, unfortunately uh, it uses a lot of oxygen so this uh, if you use this j cylinder for uh, high flow uh, nasal oxygen uh, it uses uh, about 6 liters per minute this uh, if you calculate this thing this uh, uh, this cylinder is only uh, uh, cylinder is enough only for a uh, couple of hours so about uh, 100, 100 to uh, uh, about 110 minutes. So uh, so this is the solution for uh, that problem. So uh, either uh, you uh, store uh, store oxygen in liquid form or cylinder banks. Uh, so this is even uh, this uh, uh, if when uh, if you all are working in the national hospital of colombo so you can see uh, this liquid oxygen tank near the uh, uh, dermatology building and then the uh, because most of the places is oxygen uh, uh, cylinder banks are uh, uh, in close uh, uh, closed rooms 
because uh, people cannot enter uh, without uh, proper permission. And then this oxygen usually uh, transport to uh, the wall oxygen ports uh, and then where we use in theaters uh, by pipelines. So this, uh, what you uh, know, well, I think uh, you must know about the pressure here. Uh, that is the uh, only thing I feel you must know. This it's four bar. So uh, one bar is one atmospheric pressure. Uh, this has about four bar. And then the oxygen ports on the wall. So this uh, ultimately this oxygen comes uh, to the uh, the use inside by these oxygen ports. Uh, you can see these things in your uh, wall oxygen uh, and uh, uh, walls and uh, in, the, uh, in theaters. And then this, uh, finally this, uh, once it is coming out, so uh, we can see some, we use oxygen flow meters uh, to check the oxygen flows. So we can see, uh, even in what you can see this, the uh, uh, oxygen flow meter attached to oxygen regulator, why you say it's oxygen regulator? Because this uh, cylinder gas, uh, cylinder gases are, uh, uh, cylinder gases are regulated and uh, coming out. Because this, you know, the uh, uh, this uh, uh, cylinders containing uh, oxygen. Uh, uh, how much? Uh, what is the full uh, uh, capacity of the cylinders? Uh, uh, how much of pressure inside the max, uh, fully filled uh, cylinder? It is about uh, uh, 137 bar. So the 137 times of the atmospheric pressure. So you can see that uh, from this uh, uh, oxygen, uh, this pressure gauge, and then uh, it comes to uh, it comes to this flow meter. Usually calibrated about uh, uh, about 15 liters. You can give about 15 liters, and then this oxygen uh, goes through this uh, humidity uh, water bath. Uh, this will add some water vapor into the uh, oxygen uh, that will reduce because this. If you give uh, oxygen uh, dry oxygen, that will dry up your mouth and uh, the respiratory tract. The, that will prevent to some extent with this. Uh, uh, humidification and then uh, this other side we can see this uh, oxygen flow meters in, uh, uh, in anesthetic machine and this oxygen monitoring before delivered to patients uh, usually uh, done in anesthetic machine it is uh, uh, with most of the people uh, I don't know whether you all know about this thing uh, but anesthetist knows uh, para, uh, the, these are the uh, oxygen analyzers, paramagnetic oxygen analyzer, fuel cell oxygen analyzer, oxygen electrodes, mass spectrometer, Raman spectrograph. Here they all respond to oxygen partial pressure, not concentration. Therefore, the output changes with bi barometric pressure. So, so right. This is the pulse oximeter. I thought of uh, discuss a little uh, because this is the widely used monitor in the world. That is the most important uh, monitor. Uh, we have uh, we can see three three main uh, uh, characteristics uh, in this uh, pulse oximeter. So this uh, uh, such. Uh, this SpO2 uh, level, this SpO2 is 98 here. Pulse rate is 101, and then the uh, pulse waveform. So this, why you say uh, this SpO2, plethysmographic oxygen. Don't uh, get confused with saturation. This is we uh, the we you, uh, This is also saturation. It is all right, but the here why you put SpO2 is plethysmograph. So it measures uh, this pulsatile waveform in the uh, uh, finger and uh, give this reading. So without pulsatile waveform, uh, you don't get this thing. Therefore, this uh, pulsatile waveform is very important to uh, interpret the correct values of this uh, uh, pulse oximeter reading. Uh, and then even uh, nail varnish can interfere uh, with readings. 
and then uh, it is other other thing you must understand is this is uh, uh, this uh, instrument is not calibrated uh, very with uh, very low oxygen level because uh, uh, in human uh, studied uh, with animals but uh, uh, because it is uh, not ethical to uh, uh, research on low levels right therefore uh, we don't consider very low oxygen uh, values uh, are correct in this uh, pulse oximeter but it's it's more than if saturation more than 85 is usually uh, accurate readings right then little bit of arterial blood gases there uh, there are a few rules of uh, if you want to quickly quickly assess the blood gas straight away you look at uh, the ph uh, it, if it is less than 7.4 um, it's uh, acidosis more than 7.4 alkalosis ideally this uh, the normal ph is uh, 7.35 to 45 so uh, you can take it uh, outside these values also uh, if you uh, 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 if you see uh, acidosis then you check with the uh, carbon dioxide if carbon dioxide is high that is respiratory uh, and then the, uh, and then look at pco2 uh, uh, and bicarbonate both things uh, if carbon dioxide is high then it is primary respiratory acidosis if carbon dioxide low and bicarbonate is also low the primary metabolic acidosis but here uh, most important thing, uh, thing uh, I, I, I usually check uh, each and every blood gas standard bicarbonate because standard bicarbonate doesn't change with uh, respiratory component. If there is a change in respiratory, uh, uh, if there is a change in metabolic component, uh, like uh, if standard bicarbonate is usually 24, if it is more than 24, it is likely to be. Uh, 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 alkalosis metabolic alkalosis if it is less than 24 it is metabolic uh, acidosis so sometimes you go you, uh, you can easily uh, identify mixed pictures with uh, when you check the standard bicarbonate uh, along with above readings and then uh, when we discuss uh, the, uh, about uh, physiology of oxygen, uh, uh, I choose only these four topics, oxygen cascade, oxygen dissociation curve. I think you all have studied in your medical school and then uh, your, for your uh, postgraduate studies, uh, these things, but I want to uh, uh, give a little description about uh, these things, right? And this is oxygen cascade. So this is oxygen cascade is uh, uh, step down reduction of oxygen uh, from air to mitochondria. So, so you can see uh, dips uh, at uh, different, different levels. So this, uh, you know, this atmospheric oxygen uh, uh, has uh, pressure about 750 millimeters of mercury. So this we breathe, uh, we breathe, 20% uh, oxygen. So this that means we breathe uh, liter, one liter of uh, uh, one liter of oxygen, and then the uh, uh, the partial pressure uh, should be 150. The because this uh, uh, one fifth of 750, right? That's how we uh, we calculate. So this 150. But uh, you but you see this uh, the 150 become uh, 100 when it goes to alveoli. So this is this is because of water vapor and uh, uh, it mixes with uh, expiratory carbon dioxide. So then again we can see uh, uh, dipping uh, uh, capillary arterial levels. So, yeah, because this uh, first dip is diffusion because uh, the, this gas has to diffuse from alveoli to arterial arterial blood through uh, alveolar capillary uh, barrier. So there is a little little drop in that, and then uh, 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 this uh, when it goes to arterial circulation, there is uh, there are uh, shunts. So this intracardiac, extracardiac shunt can cause little. These uh, alveolar to uh, arterial uh, these uh, differences 
uh, can contribute to a, a gradient. We we measure most of the time uh, this. Uh, so this uh, it is about uh, about five to ten uh, most of the time. And then where, when this blood goes to uh, the transported to tissues and tissue extract oxygen, and then uh, you can observe further drop in partial pressure in mitochondria. And then the next thing is uh, the physiology of oxygen dissociation curve. Right. Uh, this, uh, this curve is a sigmoid shaped curve. We know this oxygen has uh, uh, affinity, uh, uh, very high affinity towards uh, hemoglobin because uh, it has four, four molecules, usually four molecules uh, attached to hemoglobin. But the, when first molecule attached, it increases the affinity to uh, the second and then the third. So this uh, the same thing happen when uh, when uh, dissociation of oxygen from the hemoglobin also. That's why this uh, sigmoid shape. And there are uh, three salient features uh, you can observe in uh, uh, this uh, oxygen dissociation curve. Simply we call it uh, ODC, uh, the arterial point, venous point, and P50. Uh, here uh, this uh, this graph. Uh, has uh, lowered as uh, arterial point. It has come down to uh, 88 because of some problem. And then ideally, it should be about 98 to uh, 98 to 100. And then the venous point has uh, so venous point means venous blood uh, oxygen uh, saturation. Uh, it is 75 percent, around 75 percent. And then uh, when you when you go back uh, when you come to uh, the the x-axis this is partial pressure of oxygen uh, this is 40 right uh, and then uh, arterial uh, 98 uh, saturation 98 9800 and it should be uh, again partial pressure about 100 right uh, and uh, uh, 50 percent uh, Right. The, the next point is uh, P50. Uh, this is P50 is uh, the uh, partial pressure of oxygen at 50% saturation. This is usually uh, uh, 27. Uh, this point is defined because uh, we need to uh, describe the uh, left shift and right shifts for the uh, for uh, description for these purposes we define this point so if there is a left shift uh, uh, P, uh, high pH uh, low 2 3 dpg low temperature uh, so there is a uh, uh, left shift the problem with the left shift is uh, it can uh, extract oxygen from uh, blood uh, uh, lungs to blood, but the problem is uh, because of this high affinity, uh, tend to really, uh, really uh, this uh, um, uh, release oxygen at tissue level is very low. So this, uh, but this uh, the opposite is uh, happening with the right shift, uh, low pH to uh, uh, to high do to the DPG and uh, high temperature fever. Uh, at that time, oxygen releases uh, more at tissue levels. So these are the important things with the uh, oxygen dissociation curve. Uh, and then uh, I thought uh, discuss a little about hypoxia. Uh, hypoxia is uh, uh, is uh, actually this. Uh, Tissue, tissue level uh, oxygen star starvation. So there are four types of hypoxia, hypoxic hypoxia, anemic hypoxia, stagnant hypoxia, and histotoxic hypoxia. The, the hypoxic hypoxia, you, uh, you have little oxygen uh, or the uh, low oxygen in the inspired gases and ultimately uh, low oxygen in the blood. So this hypoxemia, uh, is evident with this hypoxic hypoxia. And anemic hypoxia is uh, less uh, 
hemoglobin available hemoglobin to transport oxygen so this is anemic hypoxia uh, we can see that in the carbon monoxide poisoning because this uh, the less uh, hemoglobin available for transport oxygen and in this stagnant hypoxia the uh, oxygen oxygen is not uh, transported properly to tissues because of this poor blood flow or poor cardiac output maybe in the heart failure um, and the histotopic hypoxia is uh, because uh, there are enough oxygen but cannot utilize because uh, like uh, cyanide poisoning uh, right so this uh, when we give oxygen this uh, uh, oxygen uh, oxygen toxicity is also very important uh, topic nowadays we are giving giving uh, oxygen for a uh, uh, lot of patients and then uh, uh, i say this um, uh, too much of anything is not good even oxygen the oxygen free radicals are formed even at physiological level uh, however uh, they are scavenged by antioxidant uh, mechanisms like uh, enzymes superoxide uh, dismutase catalase glutathione peroxidase pentose monophosphate shunt uh, like antioxidant pathways and uh, when there is a, uh, when when this capacity uh, exceeded usually this will happen usually this fio2 more than 60% that's why we try our best to uh, reduce the fio2 uh, using different different techniques uh, until about 40, uh, 50 60 like so this uh, uh, if this capacity exceeds this uh, uh, free, free radicals are accumulating and oxidative damage to cns and lungs um, however we should not let patients to become hypoxic uh due to a fear of oxygen uh, toxicity so this that is the other thing uh, because uh, i don't like to uh, say oxygen toxicity because some are reducing oxygen a lot but we have to have balance of uh, giving oxygen uh, also and then uh, if there is a oxygen toxicity so you can see uh, uh, this uh, signs uh, symptoms that uh, in eyes, visual visual feel loss, uh, nearsightedness, cataract formation, bleeding, fibrosis, uh, twitching, uh, central nervous system seizures, respiratory system, jerky breathing, irritation, uh, coughing, pain, shortness of breath, tachybronchitis, and acute respiratory uh, distress syndrome. And then in the pharmacology. Uh, there are three topics uh, perception of oxygen i'll deal uh, with this topic in the oxygen therapy uh, and we'll see a uh, little about pharmacology so this uh, as with all other uh, med uh, medications the uh, we start uh, when when we when we are describing any any uh, uh, any any medicine we start with physiochemical properties so this oxygen uh, is a diatomic gas uh, density and viscosity uh, slightly higher than that of air uh, and then the conventionally uh, the the wall oxygen has four bar we have discussed that earlier also and then the tasteless colorless gas however the blue in uh, liquid form uh, pale blue and then support combustion and then administration so uh, th this is a, uh, uh, is a is a inhale uh, uh, inhalational agent uh, so uh, uh, we uh, we can administer via fixed or variable performance devices uh, we'll discuss uh, in the oxygen th therapy section and then the ECMO so extracorporeal membrane oxygenation so we can uh, oxygenate the, the blood straight away from the machine uh, uh, or this like uh, uh, the artificial lung and then externally we apply hyperbaric uh, oxygen therapy uh, as well and uh, then uh, absorption so uh, the our uh, do we uh, breathe uh, one liter of oxygen per minute. We, say we uh, we uh, 
breed minitwa lima five liters that 20% of 20% uh, uh, is oxygen so that means 1 liter so we breed 1 liter of oxygen uh, uh, per minute uh, but uh, oxygen consumption is about 250 uh, milliliters per minute at rest but uh, so this uh, the seven uh, we breathe one liter but use only 250 there are 750 is our uh, reserves so we have huge reserves and then there are evidence that cutaneous absorption as well but one liter but is very very insignificant amount uh, anyway there is a, uh, the tension difference between the skin oxygen tension and the uh, air also that will uh, uh, diffuse a little light, but it's not like frog. Uh, frog has a huge capacity to uh, uh, absorb oxygen uh, from its skin, but no evidence of uh, uh, other other roots. Uh, metabolism. This uh, uh, oxygen is metabolized in all tissues in the uh, uh, in all tissues for energy production, mainly brain, skeletal muscle not uh, not only these things so they each and every every cell need energy so this uh, uh, for uh, oxygen is used for anaero uh, uh, aerobic metabolism and mainly metabolizing the mitochondrial enzymes and the zero order kinetics mainly metabolized to carbon dioxide and water cleared via lungs and uh, kidneys and then uh, indications for use uh, this is actually for when we are discussing uh, uh, any drug. So we 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 say uh, we discuss about indications. So the supplementation of hypoxemia, uh, hypo uh, uh, hypercapnia, these things also we give oxygen. Uh, and then the prophylactically we pre pre oxygenate patients. Uh, denitrogen uh, pre oxygenation is the same. Is uh, de uh, denitrogen is also we can use for uh, anesthesia. Uh, this pre-oxygenation, denitrogenation, almost same because this uh, uh, and uh, uh, as an antidote for uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, and uh, we use therapeutic uh, as an uh, antibiotic, hyperbaric oxygen for uh, deep anaerobic infections uh, to decrease the uh, volume of air, uh, air, uh, air filled body cavities. Uh, if there are body cavities, because this uh, it uh, usually uh, tend to fill with nitrogen, uh, but uh, uh, and then even pneumothorax, pneumoencephalus, uh, so air embolism, we used to give high amount of oxygen to uh, absorb, uh, uh, and then uh, this oxygen tend to go into those cavities and then absorb into the body. And the uh, and then the management of decompression sickness. We know this uh, divers uh, goes deep in the uh, in the sea, and then when it, when they uh, uh, when you go deep in the sea, they are nitrogen uh, uh, get dissolved in the uh, blood, and uh, it uh, it comes out as bubbles when they when they uh, come to the surface. So it is very painful condition. We call it bends, and then uh, uh, so uh, we have then then we have to de uh, recompress them uh, with and giving uh, uh, hyperbaric oxygen. So uh, that is the treatment for decompression sickness, and then the contraindications for uh, uh, high FiO2 because it's it's not real. But it's uh, you can't say contraindications. This is relative contraindications. Uh, bleomycin is an anti-cancer anti uh, medication that can cause uh, pulmonary fibrosis. So uh, this uh, believes that uh, uh, this uh, oxygen, high oxygen, uh, uh, contributes to uh, uh, this uh, fibrosis. And this is the same in the paracot and aspiration, uh, paracot poisoning and aspiration. Uh, anyway, you can't say uh, you can't give oxygen because this. Uh, we we have to prevent high oxygen as much as possible. It's a relative uh, contraindication, but these complications. So this drying of mucous membrane is a uh, one uh, uh, mentioned at the top because this if we give dry oxygen, uh, uh, so uh, that's why we need to uh, humidify oxygen. Um, inflammatory tracheobronchitis, and then uh, central respiratory dry. 
So this is a problem when there is a, a, a hypercapnia and the carbon dioxide retainers like COPD. Uh, so uh, they are oxygen drive. Uh, uh, this respiratory uh, uh, rate respiration is mainly depends on the little hypoxic drive. So this uh, that is also a complication uh, if you give 100% oxygen. And then the absorption atelectasis is loss of splinting because you need to maintain uh, uh, need uh, you need uh, nitrogen filled in alveoli uh, also because this uh, if you fill the uh, the whole alveoli with oxy uh, oxygen once it is absorbed into the circulation uh, the alveoli get collapsed so uh, that is also another problem and then uh, left to right shunt uh, in uh, ASDs increased peripheral uh, vascular resistance, cerebral and coronary vasoconstriction, euphoria, uh, retroenteral fibroplasia is a very uh, 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 famous in uh, newborn, uh, uh, newborn babies uh, 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 when kept in uh, incubators uh, and uh, decreased erythropoiesis. And then uh, uh, oxygen therapy. Uh, so this is uh, so this uh, lot of people are now uh, patients are getting oxygen therapy. This uh, it's and now it is becoming more and more, and then the uh, the oxygen stores are now depleting, and then uh, uh, the country is going to be a oxygen crisis. Uh, so this, uh, so we'll see how we thrive. Uh, why you need oxygen therapy? So to for hypoxia, hypoventilation. So this hypoventilation patients just after surgery, we give oxygen to uh, remove few carbon di uh, few amount of carbon dioxide that will take the uh, increase the oxygen compartment. And then the pre-oxygenation or denitrogenation in anesthesia, and then uh, the most important nowadays we in see increased work of breathing, high oxygen consumption in these COVID patients, right? And then what is hypoxia? The diminished availability of oxygen in the tissue level. We have discussed this thing. These are the causes. This indirectly this. Is, uh, we, uh, these are the same with the low oxygen FiO2. This means uh, uh, hypoxemia, anemic hypoxia, and then the circulatory failure is uh, stagnant hypoxia. The cellular dysfunction is uh, histotoxic hypoxia. And then, uh, so this um, oxygen uh, delivery to tissues depends on uh, so uh, two factors. Oxy uh, so anyway, oxygen delivery we call oxygen flux. So this oxygen flux depends on, depends on oxygen content of the blood, amount of oxygen in the blood, and the, uh, the pumping power, cardiac output. Anyway, this uh, all the factors affecting cardiac output can affect the uh, oxygen flux. So this uh, that means uh, the, what are the factors of uh, cardiac out, uh, affecting cardiac output? Uh, preload, afterload contractility heart rate all these factors can affect the delivery of uh, delivery of uh, oxygen to tissues so this then what is uh, oxygen content oxygen content uh, content uh, is uh, depends on saturation of oxygen hemoglobin uh, uh, amount of hemoglobin this if this any anemic patient has uh, low oxygen content and this is a constant uh, depend on uh, the uh, the, de, uh, the amount of uh, uh, denatured oxygen uh, hemoglobin and then uh, like uh, methemoglobin uh, there is a constant number 1.3 like uh, uh, there is a constant number and the D is dissolved oxygen these are the things uh, that can affect uh, oxygen content of the uh, blood and then uh, what is hypoxemia? Anyway, hypoxemia is low oxygen in the blood. So, but this objectively, uh, we have to uh, get some numbers. So, uh, so this uh, decreased uh, partial pressure of oxygen in the blood below normal range 
uh, we call it hypoxemia. This, uh, we usually take PaO2 less than 60 or saturation less than 94% in subjects breathing room air. And uh, low uh, 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 plethysmographic oxygen, uh, uh, less than 92% of pulse oximeter with oxygen supplementation. And then how to identify uh, a critical, critically ill patient. Before giving oxygen, uh, we, must, uh, we must identify uh, critically ill patient because this, uh, if there is a critically ill patient, we usually put oxygen before doing all the things. That's it. Uh, so this, uh, your, for, before that, you have to check the vital signs, A, B, C, A, airway, breathing, circulation, and disabilities. And even mu scores, you can, uh, you can check to uh, identify critical ill patient. And then once you've identified critical ill patient, uh, so this is the MUSE chart you can use, but this nowadays, uh, it is very difficult for COVID patients, uh, even uh, uh, this type of monitoring. But if we can uh, monitor uh, this, uh, this MUSE chart, uh, you can uh, uh, optimize the uh, management. And then how to then how to detect the out of this critical ill how to detect hypoxic patients so this you need to uh, uh, clinically assess uh, these patients right uh, then dyspnea dyspnea so this uh, is the first thing you have to assess uh, you know this uh, respiratory rate is uh, uh, so uh, sometimes we can see in the morning respiratory rate is uh, 15 uh, about two hours ago, it is uh, uh, it is 20. Now it is 25. So you you see this uh, patient is getting uh, dyspnea. So uh, so at this stage, this is actually type one respiratory failure. Now patient is compensating by increasing the respiratory rate. So uh, at this stage, we must uh, detect all these things uh, and then. Uh, and uh, if patient has altered level of consciousness, another uh, uh, another way of suspecting uh, hypoxia. And this cyanosis is very pretty obvious. If there is a cyanosis, the patient is hypoxic. And then, uh, therefore, uh, so we have to use this pulse oximeter to check the uh, partial pressure of oxygen. And then uh, the more invasive thing is uh, uh, arterial blood gas or even venous blood gas. Uh, we can get uh, idea, uh, and then the, uh, uh, if we monitor the uh, uh, modified early warning scores, uh, it's very, 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 very helpful to uh, detect these hypoxic patients. And uh, so this, uh, uh, so before giving uh, oxygen, we must know. Uh, uh, so uh, because now uh, oxygen is. Uh, we have to preserve oxygen a lot. So this we uh, we should not give unnecessarily oxygen. So check whether uh, we, before giving oxygen, uh, we as a document uh, if there is a documented uh, hypoxia. Uh, so this if there is ABG evidence, uh, uh, give oxygen. And even uh, actually, the, if you like clinically, we can uh, we can give oxygen, but. Uh, if there is, uh, if we are giving uh, unnecessary oxygen, uh, we can we can put them on air uh, by uh, using these ABGs, and then uh, high work of breathing, COVID pneumonia. We can see respiratory rate is going up, high work of breathing, and it's uh, short of breath, uh, and severe asthma, uh, uh, head injury, hemorrhage. Uh, sometimes without without looking at those uh, things, uh, we give oxygen because this uh, uh, hypox uh, they uh, uh, tolerate hypoxia um, very minimal. Therefore, uh, uh, before discussing everything, we give oxygen and uh, acute MI short term therapy or surgical interventions, post anesthesia, recovery, sedation. Uh, sedated patients, we give uh, oxygen and then. Uh, uh, fear of uh, actually the hypoxia and then the carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, we have discussed this thing in the uh, oxygen as a uh, medication as well. And then the method of admi uh, administration. This is the, uh, uh, now we have come to our uh, topic, um, uh, oxygen therapy. So we use 
fixed performance devices and uh, variable performance devices for oxygen administration. Um, FiO2 uh, uh, here, the fixed performance devices, FiO2 is constant. The uh, fraction of oxygen is uh, uh, constant despite changes on the inspiratory flow rate. So this uh, breathing rate, flow rate. Uh, so this uh, FiO2 is uh, pretty constant here. Uh, but uh, examples uh, examples are uh, oxygen tent, anesthetic breathing circuit, uh, high flow uh, nasal oxygen, venturi mask, face mask with reservoir bags. So we'll discuss one by one. Uh, and then uh, even this helmet. So this, uh, I found this picture because this uh, uh, high flow nasal oxygen connected to the helmet uh so this is also uh, another fixed uh, performance device uh and uh, this uh, these are the venturi venturi masks we can see different colors uh and uh, different colors for different uh, fio2 uh and there is a flow rate uh, mentioned in the uh this uh, this device so uh, as far as we are giving uh, adequate amount of flow, this uh, FI2 is fixed to uh, that percentage. So uh, this Venturi mask mixes with room air and creating high flow, uh, uh, high flow enriched uh, oxygen uh, to a suitable concentrations, provides accurate and constant FIO2. Uh, typical FIO2 delivery settings are 24, 28, 31, 35, 40, 60. Right, but uh, but it's difficult to give oxygen more than sixty percent uh, FiO two with uh, Venturi mask. So then we have to find other options. So this is the uh, next option: face mask with reservoir bag uh, as a non breathing mask. So this uh, so. Uh, oxygen get uh, get filled in uh, and uh, this reservoir back at the peak of the inspiration. We know this our uh, inspiratory uh, um, our peak inspiratory flow rate about 35 40. So this the so uh, but if we give uh, usually we uh, we can give with the normal flow flow meters about uh, 10 to 15 liters. Uh, so it is not enough for peak inspiration. So, uh, uh, so the rest of the oxygen uh, uh, can be uh, taken from this uh, mask. That is the technique of this uh, face mask with uh, face mask with reservoir bag. Uh, we call non rebidi mask. So, uh, so uh, uh, low. Uh, so it can. Uh, we can use 6 to 15 liters like and then can achieve uh, 80 to 100 percent it's maybe 90 95 percent uh, advantage here is deliver uh, delivers highest possible oxygen concentration and suitable for uh, breathing spontaneous with uh, severe hypoxemia uh, so this uh, so you can uh, you can increase the uh, uh, oxygen um, without intubating or without CPAP uh, uh, to some extent. Uh, and then the disadvantage is uh, impractical for long term and then malfunction can cause uh, carbon dioxide building up. Uh, and then high flow nasal oxygen. You can see this uh, nicely uh, smiling face because uh, uh, he is uh, uh, experiencing the, the comfortable uh, uh, uh comfortability of uh, this high flow nasal uh, so these are the uh, high uh, uh, equipments uh, the uh, uh, apparatus uh, set up here uh, with high flow nasal uh, this is so this is the uh, uh, cannula uh, uh, high flow cannula this is the uh, heated uh, heated hose uh, and then the, uh, this machine uh, delivers. Uh, uh, this is this, this is the uh, uh, humidifier. Uh, it uh, it can add some water vapor into the uh, circulate uh, this uh, uh, breathing circuit. 
uh, and this is the flow meter this can deliver a, a high flow uh, six up to 60 liters per minute so ultimately uh, this high flow device can uh, can uh, give uh, humidified uh, warm humidified uh, oxygen up to 60 liters per minute uh, and with some small peep so this is uh, flow peep uh, because of this very high flow uh, and then variable performance devices the variable performance devices uh, we can use uh, uh, nasal cannulae uh, and uh, simple face mask. Uh, and this is the appearance of a nasal prongs or nasal cannulae. Uh, this is how you use it uh, for your face. And this is the closer view uh, of uh, nasal prongs. Uh, and then uh, it can deliver uh, 24 to 44% of uh, 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 flow rate. But we don't usually go beyond four liters per minute. Uh, so the, if we if we want uh, more than that, we usually uh, uh, put patients on venturi mass. Uh, if it exceeds more than sixty, we usually go for uh, uh, non rebidi mass uh, or the other modalities, right? CPAP or other in invasive uh, modalities. And then the nasal cannula. Uh, the patients, uh, the advantage uh, of the, this nasal cannula is uh, you can talk and eat uh, with, with oxygen in place and uh, easily use in home settings. Disadvantage is uh, there are uh, disadvantages, but may cause irritation to nasal mucosa and then. Uh, and it delivers only uh, uh, only low low flow rates. Uh, it's not reliable high flow rates, right? And then simple uh, simple oxygen mask. Simple oxygen mask is made up of clear, flexible plastic or rubber that can uh, mold it to fit the face. Uh, it is held to uh, to the head with elastic bands. Uh, uh, some have a, a metal clip to. Uh, uh, fix over the uh, your bridge, nasal bridge, uh, and then uh, uh, this delivers uh, low low flow rate, six to ten liters. Uh, even you can put uh, fifteen liters also, but you have to have a, a good uh, good seal uh, uh, around the mass. Uh, and the disadvantage is uh, the, the tight, tight seal required to uh, deliver higher concentrations. Uh, and then advantage is you can give uh, uh, oxygen for a short period, right? Okay. How to set up oxygen uh, oxygen therapy? So this is the uh, this is very important because we we discussed the, uh, uh, that. Uh, in the pharmacology section, the prescription of oxygen. Before uh, prescription of oxygen, we have to set up our targets. So uh, uh, then either 92, 94, 98, 96. So uh, that depends on the patient's condition. And then uh, determine how much. So percentage FI, uh, FiO2, 60%, 50%, uh, or 40%, like. Uh, and then what device to use? Uh, uh, so this high flow nasal uh, nasal prongs like uh, we have to write them and then uh, on how to monitor so if we put oxygen and then uh, uh, then we have to write down the pulse rate respiratory rate uh, or whether we are going to uh, check ecg uh, uh, and the bp uh, blood pressure partial pressure of oxygen and uh, how frequent uh, this should be done half an hourly quarter hourly like that right so this, uh, uh, I thought of uh, setting up a target, uh, discuss a little. This, uh, are we going for 100% oxygen? This is the uh, problem I have seen most of the places. Everybody is target for 100% oxygen. So this is, uh, uh, this is, I think, no value because this uh, sometimes you might giving uh, too much of oxygen because uh, 
100 per, uh, 100% uh, pulse oximeter reading means uh, it can be uh, partial pressure of oxygen 100 150 200 300 400 we don't know uh, so this uh, but if we maintain 80 uh, 98 99 so we know this partial pressure oxygen is around 100 therefore this in in all acutely unwell patients not at risk of type 2 respiratory failure recommend uh, uh, target saturation is uh, 94 to 98 if it is more than 90 uh, 94 it's enough uh, and then most of the covid 19 patient our target is about 92 so this is uh, but this varies between patient to patient uh, because of this high oxygen demand, high oxygen consumption. Uh, if you uh, set up a high oxygen target for COVID patient, uh, you have to give a lot, lot of oxygen. Uh, so this, uh, and in uh, patient uh, uh, at risk of type two respiratory failure. So like uh, uh, we mean this uh, like COPD like patients, some patients are, uh, carbon dioxide uh, retainers they are they are brain stem is insensitive to carbon dioxide so this respiratory rate is maintained with little little uh, hypoxic drive so that patient if you give too much of oxygen uh, the respiration may go down so therefore uh, that type of patient we target 88 to 92 range uh, the recommendations are uh, all acute ill patients uh, should be monitored for oxygen saturation. Amount of oxygen should be recorded with uh, partial pressure of ox uh, uh, plethysmographic oxygen or the arterial oxygen. So ABG or uh, uh, pulse, pulse oximeter readings. And uh, if oxygen requirement is going up or uh, SpO2 is going below 85%, you have to seek expert help. Uh, you can't wait uh, and doing that thing, these things, so you have to get uh, uh, advice from uh, intensivists or these anesthetists, uh, they are the people dealing with these airways. Uh, and uh, too early, uh, ABG and full blood counting significantly uh, hypoxic patients in as general. And then the pulse oximeter should be available in all the places where critically ill patients are managed. And following devices should be available. Uh, check whether you all are managing COVID patients, nasal cannula, non rebreathing face mask. Very important nowadays uh, because uh, you, you prevent uh, unnecessarily giving too much of oxygen. And then a uh, wide range of Venturi, Venturi mask, 28 to 60 percent range, and then high flow nasal oxygen if available. It's very costly machine nowadays because if because uh, uh, it uses a lot of oxygen, uh, it is uh, discouraging most of the places. Uh, and uh, uh, and then CPAP and BiPAP, invasive or non invasive for uh, COVID-19 patient, if possible, uh, if it is available. And then the uh, last thing uh, I want to tell you, this uh, COVID patients, uh, uh, recently uh, uh, recovery RS uh, trial find CPAP reduces invasive ventilation in COVID-19 patients. Uh, this was uh, published on 5th of uh, uh, August, 2021. This is uh, last week, right? uh this is the therefore this is uh, now the for covid patients uh, for oxygenation purposes uh, cpap or uh, little bipap is very beneficial uh, when compared to uh, invasive ventilation these are my references uh, thank you very much Yeah, we have to put questions. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for that great uh, presentation. And uh, we have got ample of questions from the participants. Uh, uh, I would like to summarize the questions and repeat to you, sir. Um, and the first question is, uh, what is the accepted brand of pulse oximeter?
so uh, i don't i don't use brands uh, so uh, so this uh, but is available uh, i use because uh, uh, so we don't promote brands so we go for usually even for uh, uh, medicines uh, uh, seneca bible uh, uh, doesn't like uh, prescribing in brands <laughs> right that's the answer thank you sir and the next question is uh, is pulse pulse oximetry reading affected by the incident light sorry uh, is pulse oximetry reading affected by the incident light uh there are uh, discussions but uh, exactly uh, may i can't comment on that in this All right, sir. Um, and the next query is: Should we use only stable water for hum humidification of oxygen, or can we use normal tap water to humidify oxygen? Because uh, uh, that is a problem. Because uh, uh, even for saline nebulization, uh, uh, because uh, we 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 put them into a small container and then they connected to the. Uh, uh uh ventil uh, or this breathing circuits uh mm. that can introduce some infection therefore uh, the it should be very sterile sterile manner right because therefore uh, may only when it is required so if you are nebulizing with uh, bronchodilators you can add some uh, uh, some extra uh, saline and nebulize right for uh, uh, for humidification right thank you sir uh, one more query from a participant uh, can we get central nervous system toxicity by inhaling 100 percentage of oxygen at one atmospheric pressure so it has to be more than 1 atm yeah because we are giving one atmospheric pressure uh, oxygen even for 100% so this uh, Um, but if if there is a great problem even we can go for three three atmospheric pressure of the for hyperbaric oxygen so this uh, uh, this is uh, this can happen even at uh, one atmospheric so that's why we uh, we usually reduce the fio2 to uh, 6 uh, 50 to 60% uh, we we try our best to reduce to that level because uh, up to that level uh, body can handle uh, oxygen free radical formation because it uh, 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 oxygen free radical formation uh, you can see even at normal normal uh, normal level but uh, those free radicals are scavenged nicely with this antioxidant mechanism the body has it's a it's a big capacity up to 60% means very big capacity uh, if it goes beyond 60% uh these free radicals get uh, accumulated and can cause this damage uh, central nervous system and lungs main problem is this uh, when lungs affected and lung damage with the oxygen free radical that will increase the oxygen requirement further then we we get into vicious cycle so this is very difficult to come out from that vicious cycle All right thank you sir and the next query is uh, what is the alarm of oxygen saturation that should be set in a pulse oximeter so pulse oximeter uh, actually this uh, that depends on the patient because this uh, this uh, as i uh, described that setting up uh, fio2 uh, the uh, that is also same because this uh, uh so you can't exactly say uh this is the this is the level because that depends on the patient oxygen requirement and then the oxygen tolerability uh but the recently i have seen this one patient covid patient uh he uh, uh, because he is on uh, cpap uh, ventilation uh, uh 100% he is getting 100% with cpap and but uh, when he is getting his feeding uh, it tend to uh, go down to even to uh, 60 70s 
but he is he is fine he is tolerating that thing because this uh, this this target levels uh, differ from patient to patient Thank you, sir. A few more queries we got. Please bear with us. Um, uh, yeah, sir, a pulse oximetry readings are affected by bilirubin levels. Uh, it was described earlier. I don't know the re uh, recent evidence. All right, sir. And uh, one more query: How to use pulse oximeter and uh, ABG in carbon monoxide poison? Because uh, carbon monoxide uh, 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 overreaches the pulse oximeter reading, therefore we should not uh, rely on this uh, nice oxygen saturation in the pulse oximeter for carbon di carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, and then the, uh, the the opposite thing happened with the uh, methamphetamine hemoglobinemia. It it tend to uh, give low oxygen reading uh, always, right? All right. Uh, thank you, sir. And a few more questions. Can you please explain a little about how to choose uh, CPAP and the uh, uh, BiPAP? I mean, CPAP. Was right. Yeah. CPAP mainly we use PEEP and uh, ventilate patients, right? Uh, but this uh, I have seen this most of the COVID patients. Uh, they need little BiPAP because they uh, because uh, they are. Uh, need some pressure support and supports the ventilation uh, to remove carbon dioxide. So this, uh, uh, the uh, BiPAP is, uh, if there is any by means two, so there is a upper level and lower level. The upper level is uh, uh, the pressure support uh, for spontaneous breathing patients. Uh, and the lower level is PEEP. We can put PEEP and uh, pressure support, that is, that is BiPAP for spontaneous breathing patients. All right, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, we got a few more queries. I'm trying to connect the questions as asked from you, sir. Can you explain uh, when a patient gradually deteriorating step by step, what devices we should use? Right, that's a good question. Gradually deteriorating patient. So that's why I, I uh, discussed a little about this, uh, how to detect critically ill patients and how to detect uh, hypoxic patients. Uh, so this, the, that's why uh, the, because this MUSE charts, modi uh, modified uh, early warning scores, MUSE charts are used uh, at National Hospital. A lot of wards uh, have uh, these things, but unfortunately, uh, the heavy load of uh, uh, COVID patients, uh, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, uh, monitor this, uh, uh, use this uh, MU scores, uh, the huge amount of work. Uh, but if we can follow these things, very, very easy to find critically ill patients and the gradually deteriorating patients. Uh, and uh, for this, uh, when they are deteriorating, uh, uh, we should be able to catch them early. Uh, and then when when giving oxygen also, if oxygen requirement uh, is low, we can use nasal prongs. And if it is uh, more uh, up to uh, the 21 to 28 percent, I use uh, nasal prongs. And if it is more than 30, uh, 30 to 60 venturi, and it's more than 60 uh, high flow uh, black high uh, this uh, uh, breathing. Um, uh, non rebreathing uh, mass, uh, and then uh, along with uh, plus or minus CPAP, BiPAP, uh, high flow nasal oxygen, and invasive ventilation thereafter. All right, uh, thank you so much. Sir. I think that's all the queries. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Anthony Mendes for his excellent presentation uh, and spending his valuable time with us on behalf of GMO and uh, Society for Health Research and Innovation. Also, we would like to talk about appreciation uh, on behalf of GMOA and SRI. Uh, please follow the link in the chat box to receive your participation certificate. Uh, that's the end of the webinar today. Thank you for your participation. Thank you very much, Sergey. And I'm Dr. Sinta signing off today.